and good afternoon. Welcome to today. The race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stan Salter along with Keith Fustel post Triple Crown Sunday here at Laurel Park. Sunday brunch is cooking. We have a nice 10 race card. Come on out here. Celebrate Sunday fun day with us at Laurel Park. We saw our 13th Triple Crown winner mm -hmm. yesterday. Justify what an awesome horse he is. He's undefeated. Now only the second Triple Crown, the, the uh, second undefeated Triple yeah. Crown winner. Seattle Slew mm -hmm. and Justify. Bob Baffert did it again, second time in four years. Is there anybody better than him right now handling these uh, kind of horses on the trail? I only mean, second trainer wow. to win the Triple yeah. Crown twice. Yeah, he gets him, and he was loaded early. McKinsey, unfortunately, was yep. the horse they thought was going to be the one and uh, it was, was taken off the trail. But uh, Justify, uh, you know, the way he bounced back after the Preakness was yep. key to me. I mean, I'd seen him at, at Churchill Downs and seen him live and in the flesh and look, seeing what he looked like. You know, he wasn't quite all there, I don't think, on Preakness Day. Right. But, you know, seeing how that three-week break kind of picked his head back up. And, uh, you know, he, he did what we kind of thought. Go ahead. There wasn't really anybody as fast as him early. Uh, Mike Smith did a great job, got him out of the gate cleanly, controlled the pace up front, just kind of toyed with a couple rivals as they came to him. But you got to give a lot of credit to that second-place finish, too. Yeah, Gronkowski, Gronkowski. What how about run. that? Chad yeah, Brown. That horse Chad was. Brown. Yeah. All right, NBC did a great job with the coverage of the Belmont. The ratings were way up for the Derby, Preakness, and the Belmont. If you haven't seen it by now, I'm sure you have, but let's watch it again. Here's Larry Coleman's stretch call on NBC of Justify winning the Triple Crown. And they're into the stretch, and Justify comes roaring home to a raucous Belmont Park with one furlong to run. Gronkowski and Hopberg trying to run it down. Vito Rosso is fourth, but 16th to go. Justify is still there. Justify from Gronkowski. He's just perfect, and now he's just immortal. Justify is the 13th Triple Crown winner. Gronkowski was second. Hopberg was third. All right, so a great call there by Larry Colmas. Justify, he led uh, start to finish, and uh, yeah, Gronkowski a good second. Hofberg rallied. Uh, to get up for third, mm -hmm. but uh, Justify, and he might just go on and finish his career undefeated. Mm -hmm. It'll be a, a interesting and exciting to see where he goes next as all eyes uh, all eyes of the racing yeah. world. Uh, there you go. Congratulations, Justify, your 13th Triple Crown winner. And, yeah, the whole world's going to follow this horse every step he makes. And uh, I'm saying – We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see him next in the Travers, uh, may, maybe a race before that, the, the Haskell, the Jim yeah. Dandy, or maybe he just goes right to the Travers. Yeah, take a little bit of a break and a well-deserved break. But, uh, yeah, it's great. You know, it, it's good to have this in the game. Even like I talked about the second-place finisher, got, you know, Horst Gronkowski, the name and everything. Yeah. All that helps. You know, that, yeah. that helps yeah. getting, you know, fresh faces, new people uh, into the game, hopefully some new gamblers into the game. But yeah. uh, Justify, uh, you know, he, he wasn't going to be denied. He just ran true as could be, straight as a string down through the stretch. Uh, after, you know, going that, that quarter from, from the mile to the mile, a strong time, 24 with a clip off. So, yeah, yeah. yeah you got to give it to him. All right, so, so you mentioned getting new people in the game. Gronkowski, mm -hmm. the football player, he yeah. was at the Belmont sure. yesterday. They showed him on NBC. Looked like he was having a good I'm time. Sure he, prob he, he probably put a few dollars <laughs> through, through the window. I think Gronk can have a good time anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Maryland bred had fun up at, uh, up at Belmont yesterday. Big mm -hmm. weekend for the Maryland horses. He had Cal Lynch win the Tremont on Friday, and Tim Keefe went up there with the Maryland bred still having fun mm -hmm. in the Woody Stevens. Let's show you the stretch run of the grade two Woody Stevens still having fun. There he is way back on the outside coming late on his left lead. It doesn't matter. Nice ride by Joel Rosario. Now he switches to his right lead. And he just comes and mows them down. Good looking win there and a great two for still having fun, the Maryland bred. 43 and change for the half, three quarters and eight and a deuce. Look at this. He, you know, Timmy Keefe had to be licking his chops at the top of the lane. Got this horse. You saw he tried to do his little act of left lane, lay in a little bit. Uh, was a nice job and got him straightened out and surged past the leaders. We talked about it time and time again. Yeah, they flirted with the distances. Yeah. I, I think we can put it to rest now. He is he is truly, to me, looks like a one-run sprint. He has got a turn of foot, and he gets that kind of setup. He's deadly like that. And yeah. he loves the seven furlongs. Oh, yeah, seven furlongs, six is perfect. Now a two-time yeah. stakes winner going seven furlongs. So he's bred right here in Maryland by Mr. and Mrs. Charles McGinnis and Tim Keefe. Tim Keefe, the trainer. He has some other owners uh, uh, in on the partnership as well. So a Maryland bred three-year-old mm -hmm. still having fun with a big win in the grade two Woody Stevens. And he, he's the he's early favorite for Maryland bred horse of the year right now. I, I would with think that big so. uh, And, uh, and, and yeah. uh, you know, big grade two win yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's next for him? So, mm -hmm. you know, you might, you might 
take uh, take on some grade one company sure. later on this year. Sure, I mean, I, I mean, uh, with those kind of setups, he you know he, he legitimized himself like that. We watched him. We saw the talent early on with this horse. Right. I mean, uh, he he's got that quick quick turn of foot, that rapid acceleration when he gets that little setup, and just all they need to do is come back a little bit, and and, and he can mow him down late. And then, you know, another Maryland guy, Grand Motion, uh, had that's a big right, weekend in as the well. beat us right. out of some money up there yesterday, okay. unfortunately, but uh, I guess good for him. Edgar like Prado. he needs it. Yeah, Edgar so. Prado is the boy for that win, right? Yeah, Prado. All right, so the Marylanders doing well up there at uh, at Belmont on Belmont Weekend. Mm -hmm. Let's get right to it here for our Sunday card. Let's show you both tracks. We're fast and firm today. Uh, no, no rain this mm -hmm. weekend. We were due for a nice weekend. There's some storms later on. Hopefully we'll dodge yeah. them and we have some uh, perfect fair playing tracks, I think. I think we do. Absolutely. The guys have done a nice job. Uh, fast and firm for this afternoon, and let's hope this rain just stays away. Let's get through another good card. All right, sounds good. Let's get right to it here. Race one is going to kick off the rolling super high five, and we have a carryover here for you mm -hmm. in uh, race one. This is going to be a very playable seven-horse field here in the opener. There's the carryover in that rolling super high five, a little over 2,600. That has a low 15% takeout. Also, race one will kick off your early pick mm -hmm. five, both your pick fives here at Laurel. Your best bet with that industry low 12% takeout. Always a mandatory payout here on the early pick five starting in race one. Let's take a look here. We're going five and a half furlongs on the bowl game turf course rail at 17 feet. Maiden claiming 25,000. Philly Amares three and up. I go with the Tom Morley Philly by Lemon Drop Kid. The two Lemon Avocado, my top pick. Fergal Lynch had a, a two win day uh, yesterday, I believe. Virgil Lynch rides this horse. He was aboard for the debut. A good third against Maiden 25, sprinting on the turf at Pimlico. Encountered some traffic problems in the stretch there. They bet the Philly down about 3-1 to one in her debut. Uh, hopefully she can get a good break and, and be a little closer early on, mm -hmm. breaking from the inside, going 5.5. I, I like the two lemon avocado here in the opener. Yeah, she was moving. She wasn't moving real, real quick, but she was hampered uh, by the horse that's uh, going to be my top selection today, Private Drama. You see the short comment erratic and weakened after dueling through pretty good internal fractions at Pimlico. Private Drama gets the blinkers on, though, today. Uh, dealt with a horse by the name of Dorcas Carey, who was a good second, running a buyer 57 on Friday. Uh, I think Private Drama, looking at this field, I, th I think it's the controlling speed and a little bit of a break, a little breather on the front end. If, uh, if she can go ahead and clear, I think she can take them coast to coast. All right, so I, I used the one in my top four. You get five pounds off with the Bug Boy Weston Hamilton. The break's going to be the key mm -hmm. for the one private drama breaking from the inside. We both like the five a little bit here as well. Nightmare for trainer mm -hmm. Donnie Barr. Daniel Centeno, he had a big day yesterday. Centeno riding extremely well right now. He had three wins yesterday and just absolutely an excellent rider on the turf. He was on that horse of Polichek's, right? The horse yes. that came up. Man, that, yep. what a run that horse made. Yep. Had a little bit of trouble and just surged away that, that probably a bet back uh, i would think maybe even on a raise wow all right it's a nightmare here uh, a decent third two starts ago against maiden sixteen thousand, mm -hmm. and i uh, had a, 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 a tough trip at pimlico was fractures at the gate steadied mm -hmm. in that race but made up a lot of ground to uh, to finish fourth now third time with the blinkers on uh, but going to be coming late here, a closing sprinter, the five nightmare. Yeah, decent enough try, two back for the 16th to warrant the raise up to 25 and did encounter some trouble. You know, that adversity before the race and then during the race, closed up almost eight lengths through the final eighth of a mile. The extra rake around is good. The extra 16th will work uh, for nightmare. Take a, look at, take a look at one of the firsters, the four stratosphere here for Robin Graham on the top side, Get Stormy. All turf would carry that speed going a little bit longer uh, on the grass, but uh, has a half brother uh, that was a winner sprinting on the turf. Uh, the four could be live here in its debut. Sure, yeah, get Stormy, a champion on the turf. Some nice works here for this horse, and the Robin Graham Barn horse has been running well recently. So nice little mm -hmm. turf sprint there to kick off uh, all the action in race one. Let's take a look at the second. We start the early pick four in race two, going seven furlongs, mm -hmm. claiming 16,000 for straight three-year-olds or older horses. Never won three, a dual condition here in the second. I go with the five on top, Magician's Calendar for trainer Mike Trombetta, Sheldon Russell, on this four-year-old son of street magician. A good second against 25,000 starter allowance company two starts ago going a mile. Was in front in that race and just got a little tired uh, to finish second. Forget about the turf race last out. The horse is 0 for 3 on the turf. Gets back to his preferred surface today. Trombetta going turf to dirt 21%. 
I like to find Magician's calendar, especially cutting back from the mile to seven furlongs today. He's going to be a major player in here, has tactical speed. His best race was at this seven furlong distance uh, last April. I think it's good position just outside of legal precedent. We'll probably go ahead and send from the rail. Will that soften him up, though, going into that pace? I, I, I think so. I think one proud Wildcat for uh, for Kira on the four horse ridden today by Alex Cintron. Just a little bit more consistent. Can't quite get over the hump recently. A second beat and a half, three back, third beat and a neck. I think this is the right kind of field. He can kind of get on by the last 16th of a mile. Yeah, you have to respect the connections. The horse is in the right race, coming mm -hmm. off a little freshening. Maybe that'll p pick yep. his head up here. He's been a little kind of a money burner uh, the last three yes, races. Be beaten favored the mm -hmm. last three, but Cintron McGee, the, the four, one proud Wildcat. Figures tough here in the second to three. Ready, aim, Vargas on this uh, four-year-old for trainer Jamie Nash. Last three races have been on the turf, but the last uh, main track was down at Oaklawn at, at a similar level. A good third down there. First off, the claim was a 66 buyer. Uh, a, a one-third going uh, going seven furlong. So the, th the three ready aim figures here in the second. Yeah, I had a tough time trying to gauge this horse. The form just kind of tailed off on the grass. Now we're going to shorten back up, switch things up a little bit, go sprinting uh, on the dirt. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, a 77 working back up off the page. Um, I, I think he's going to be a stalker, kind of make a move into it once again. Can he finish uh, with the likes of Magician's Calendar, uh, one proud walk at it, even the one in him with him, making up. I think this is a, you know, a little bit of a step up. He's staying at the same level. A little tougher horses there in him with him. But, then, you know, I like Damon. This horse, you know, you got to respect anything they said. They spot their horses very well. Yep. Uh, the extra ground is not going to hurt this horse. Top and bottom bred to stretch out a little bit further. In him with him, uh, holding pretty good form. All right, let's uh, turn the page here. Big field here in race three. Mm -hmm. We're going a mile in a 16th on the Acceler Turf course here in the third rail of 70 feet. This uh, is uh, the Lawn Jeans Ladies for Gentry mm -hmm. race for amateur riders. You see the weights are a bit higher here in race three. The conditions made in claiming 16,003 and up here for the third race. I go with the eight on top. Here, Lynn's going to be one of the favorites mm -hmm. in here for trainer Mark Reed, four-year-old son of Colonel John. A good third, two starts ago. That was going a mile on the turf down there at Gulfstream and uh, came off the turf last out at Pimlico, but that was a nice second uh, at this maiden $16,000 level. That was late May, so the horse is in good form right now. Uh, we, we both like the eight Kierlin here in race yeah, three. Yeah, going to be the favorite, no doubt about it. Uh, beating it four to five with some trouble. Uh, three back a good effort with some trouble as well at, at golf stream and yeah, breaking down this race you know there's not a the proven horse I guess is the eight Carolyn uh, on the turf we had the scratch of the seven benevolent factor was going to take a lot of play I go to the nine stay awesome uh, rider here Lily uh, Marie Angles actually got a win yesterday I believe up at uh, parks yesterday the day before up at parks an experienced rider 29 wins from 289 rides. Stan, I went back Pretty and did good. a little bit of work here. 109 uh, uh, in the money finishes. So watch the ride. A good little rating job to the inside yesterday. Never panicked. Shot through along the rail midway on the final turn and got the job done. A little bit of right-handed stick work late. Stay awesome. Trained by Richard Hendrick. This horse is off quite a while, but the first time gelding blinkers go on. This is a guy who's revived some careers of some race horses in the past, especially on the grass. It was a $300,000 purchase. Is half to an 11-time winner on the grass going long. Let's take a shot with Stay Awesome in here. Yeah, well, Brad Hendricks having a big year, 24%. The horse is the first time gelding today. The blinkers go on. Uh, the, the You mentioned the, the, the rider having a good mm -hmm. year. So the nine, Stay Awesome, I use in my top three. The ten, I have in my exacto. The Bobby for trainer Lacey Gaudet. This girl gallops for, uh, for, for Lacey, a three-year-old son mm -hmm. of Shanghai. Bobby here. The blinkers go on. Forget about the debut. It's a whole different ball game here today. On this horse, been training here at Laurel Park. So I throw the 10, the Bobby, into okay. the mix. We also like the one, Zeke the Streak, Taylor Leatherman, an mm -hmm. exercise rider over there at Pimlico on this three year old from Milan, Milosevic. So at least you can say the horse is dead fit. Last couple of races going mm -hmm. around the ground. You have to proud Maid Marion, who we've seen run around here, two for eight on the grass, uh, did win going long. Second dam was okay on the turf. The only try was it was almost a 70 buyer. So Zeke the Streak could be the controlling speed uh, in this race. Get clear stay out of trouble but uh, I'll show you how sick I am another little factoid on the nine stay awesome out of that great Meadows race back in October of sure. 2017 Stan 10th place finisher came back to win recently nice. and a Virginia bred allowance at great Meadows on right, an so allowance race so interesting uh, yeah. uh, interesting amateur race here it's going to be a big field here scratch to seven uh, 
benevolent dictator is scratched and then scratch the uh, 13, 14, 15. I believe the 16 Hepcat draws in. I have that as a late scratch as well. So the Hepcat's very out late. as yeah, well. So all yeah, Jimmy Day woke up and scratched. All right, so all okay. the AEs are scratched. <laughs> and the rider change on the 14, Brilliant Brave. Make the rider Bethany Bumgarner on the 12, Brilliant yeah. Brave here. Bethany Bumgarner, and she's a good rider. Mm -hmm. She's ridden in races like the Maryland Hunt Cup and the Grand National and Butler. So yeah. she's a good, uh, I think she gallops up there for Elizabeth Voss. So, mm -hmm. all right, it's an interesting amateur race. You like the nine yeah. uh, here. I go, I chalk it up here with the favored from the Mark Reed barn here in the third. Let's take a look right. here. Race four. Race four is going to kick off the uh, middle pick four here. Stat first. Okay, stat here first go. here on race four. Maiden special weight for two-year-old Phillies going five furlongs on the dirt. Here's the, scat, uh, the, the stat you have for uh, Cal Lynch, and congrats, Cal. Guy kind of doing no wrong, really, with his two-year-olds, right? And had a winner stretching out along with Dancing with Painter yesterday. But for the two-year-olds, Cal Lynch here in 2018, three for, thir three for 13 and 10 for 13 in the money with two-year-olds in 2018, an ROI of $3.67. That's pretty good. Got that stakes win up in New York with our Brain Trust on Friday in the Tremont. Uh, congrats, Cal, is the horse here, the fire. I'm going to take my shot. I think the six is going to be the horse to beat, no refunds. Might get a little case of seconditis. But looking at this horse, by congrats, uh, a stand he can get two-year-old winners. Had a full brother that was 0 for 2. But this this mother, well, she was great. Two stakes, placed spreading on the dirt. Made all upwards of 300000 I think congrats, Cal, is going to be ready. I like the sharp, real sharp gate workout last time out. Uh, should be ready for Cal Lynch. Yeah, some nice works here. Lynch, 26% with his uh, first-time starters. Older sibling here for this filly. Made a couple hundred thousand, so you have mm -hmm. to like the five. I go with the uh, Tommy Proctor, first-time starter. The three, asked his customer by Bodie Meister. They paid 260000 mm -hmm. for this girl as a yearling at Keeneland. The dam, five mock speed. She, she wasn't much. She was only one for ten, made mm -hmm. 24000 Second dam was a little bit better. Made 170000 Sometimes you click on that second dam, you see some old, uh, oh, some old yeah. stallions uh -huh. by like a uh, Lost Code. Second uh -huh. dam was by Lost Code. It was by Kodak. So some old pedigree lines here for the three asset customer. And older siblings, two for twenty, made forty thousand. So uh, some okay pedigree notes to go by. We've been working up there mm -hmm. at Delaware, and uh, Al uh, Ashley Kastrenzi comes down the ride. I like the three ask the customer on top. And here. an interesting stat on Proctor here. It's kind of like the one yesterday. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a negative stat. Remember we talked about Delacour with those uh, right. first-time starters on the turf in Maryland. He was like one for 13, now one for 14. And Proctor, believe it or not, he's only two for 25 with two-year-old firsters on the dirt uh, the past two years. But both were favorites. So you got to hope this horse is the favorite, Stan. I might bump that up. But uh, you see the breeding there, Bodie Meister on top, and spent a lot of money on this horse, sure. 260000 uh, She better be a runner. All right, how about the uh, the horse? Uh, the horses with experience in here, the six, no refunds. Mm -hmm. I We both used in the exact. Uh, we have a video spotlight to show you of this filly by Buffum, a Maryland bred for uh, for the Moverly family and John Salzman Jr. Here's the race of May 17th in the slot at Pimlico. Yeah, just gets in trouble. Uh, it's behind Montana. Sunset was the Wesley Ward horse. We're going to see this horse in, in the Moberly Silks, the brown and the white. Have to steady there right into the turn. Uh, lost a little momentum, but I like the way this uh, filly, she kind of rebounded. Really didn't bother. She shifted out, handled the off track well, angled five wide, and really finishes up well. Montana Sunset on the lead. At the, uh, on the outside is our horse. No refunds, and it's just dead game to the wire. No refunds right back here today on the fast track. Shouldn't pose any problem at all. Uh, the horse to beat, no doubt, in race four. Uh, I like the six. The other uh, filly with the experience in here, the four, Pink Notion, by Great Notion, a good second last out as the even money favorite at Pimlico against Maiden 40,000 Company. It's kind of a, a similar level. Mm -hmm. She gets the hot jockey, Daniel Centeno, who's having a big weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, you believe we both like the four, Pink Notion. Here. Yeah, and I had a definite excuse to see that. Uh, fell pre-race game, was able to handle all that and keep on running well. Look at that recent workout, a half and 46. Did that take a little too much out of her? That's awfully sharp uh, for Pink Notion. Uh, Helen Sung is scratched the eight, and that's going to be, I'm going to use the three in there as well, on underneath those stand, the Proctor horse. All right, so nice group of maiden special weight, two-year-old fillies there in race four. Let's get a quick commercial break. or way over here, but yeah. uh, we'll get back here. Nice pick six starting in race five. I like the late pick five starting in race six, you like the late pick late four pick coming four. up mm -hmm. in race seven. We'll take a look at that right after this.
is great for the game. All right, welcome back. Today's 20 cent rainbow pick six starts in race five today. A little carryover over $600. Nice sequence today for the pick six. It starts in the fifth race here. We're going, I, I don't have a ticket for the pick six. I like the late pick five okay. today coming up in race six. Uh, let's take a look at the fifth race. Five and a half for long is on the bowl game turf course. Rail at 17 feet, 25,000 starter allowance company here. Never won two. I go with the four. God loves the center from the Susan Cooney barn. Sheldon Russell on this four-year-old son of a redeem. Took him a while to break his maiden. He broke his maiden for maiden 25,000. Second off the layoff, second start as a four-year-old and followed that up with a very good second last out at this level as the favored. Finbar, uh, the long shot winner that day came from way back. Finbar came back and hasn't run well since then, but uh, I'm sticking with the four. God loves the center here in race five. Yeah, race five, we'll speed it up here. I see speed, speed, and more speed. I'm gonna look for a closer and look for a horse to like a little shot with a price. The three, $10 hammer, transitioning to the turf for the first time, first time by Sky Mesa, they can run on anything. Full brother uh, won its lone turf sprint, ran a buyer uh, of 76. I like the big improvement last time out. Third time in the barn here for Katie Balls. $10 hammer is going to be great set up. We, we cash a big bet. We'll buy a $10 hammer hot dog upstairs. There you, there you go. All right, you'll get a nice price. Toledo riding well. He's on the three $10 hammer. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at the six race. Right. We start the late pick five here in race six. No carryover, but as always, that industry low 12% takeout here in the late pick fives. The nice two other than mm -hmm. allowance feature here going three quarters on the main track to kick off this late pick five. I have a ticket, a $48 play. Let's take a look. I go three deep here in race six. My top pick, the four stolen loves, going to be awfully tough, but the six parade of nations looking for his fourth win in a row here at Laurel Park. And how about the one fleet gold digger, mm -hmm. uh, an impressive winner last out at Pimlico at, at five to one. Uh, that might be a nice claim for Jamie Ness. Got that horse down at Oakland last March. I like the one fleet yeah. gold digger. Centeno mm -hmm. will ride at a nice price there. So I'm three deep in race six. Nice maiden special weight in race seven. Grand Motion's going to have a popular favor to eight. Midnight tea time, but also the two Uno Dancer Prado aboard for Corral is going to be tough in there. Nice two other than allowance feature going two turns on the main track in race eight. I like the seven so innocent at a nice price in there for Charlie Frock, but the two Folk Magic going to be tough for Jamie Ness. Race nine, a nice first level allowance going six furlongs. I go three deep there. Take the, uh, take the eight out. All right, we take the uh, we take the eight yeah. out is is a late scratch. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bricks is uh, out of there, so I I add the two, and Bo Vuk onto my ticket there. Uh, I'm all messed up there in race nine, but I had the two Bo Vuk on onto my ticket there in race nine as the eight Mr. Bricks a late scratch, and then I just go two deep there in race mm -hmm. ten. That's a 7500 wide open going long on the turf. The eight. Uh, Talk about a triple crown hangover. I'm going I'm going with an <laughs> 0 for 30 horse on the turf. Liberal spin I like for Hugh McMahon. A good second at this level last out. And then maybe the uh, if that if that 0 for 30 horse doesn't come through, maybe the ten year old Cruzmore can bail me out. Toledo and Cap at eight to one. Hey, I use that horse. I just noticed that 0 for 30. You know, we look at a lot of stuff, Stan. Ooh. Stuff's gonna slip yeah. by us, no no doubt of it. I thought the eighth race is really hard. I I think you could hit the all button in there. There's not a whole lot of separating uh, those horses in, in race number eight. I'm gonna take a shot at the late pick four. Let's talk oh. about race six real quick. Sure. Um a sprint at two other than. Uh, 25, two other than here on the dirt going six furlongs. Yeah, Stolen Love, I believe, is going to be the favorite. Is he a little vulnerable at six furlongs? So that's my biggest concern for him. Yeah, he's run two bang-up races. Brother Chubb, two backs, the key horse. Came back to win a Jersey bred stake at Mammoth. But uh, he got away with things. I, you know, you see the internal's pretty quick. That second quarter was quick. Can he kind of keep going? He's run two hard races in a row. Parade of Nations finally gets in. He's been entered and scratched a couple times trying to look for this this kind of spot. Gets it. He can stalk and make a move into it. I think there's plenty of speed. Will he be mine up to the front? Rock and Feller's his speed. Stolen Love will be close. How about Team Tim to blow it up for Damon Dillo to Bico? They are holding this horse at the level. A claim for 20000 back in September. His run okay. Throw out the last race on a sloppy seal track. Comes back to a fast dirt track. 
This horse can roll from the back of the pack with Stevie Hamilton. Light up the board. Uh, three are the one as the closers to get it done. I think they're the sustainable closers in race number six. His last two couple races haven't been very good, but this will be his third race back off. Mm -hmm. A little freshing. He's a four-time winner here at Laurel Park. Stevie Hamilton, very good with the closing sprinter. So I didn't use the three, but I'm not going to talk you off that horse out of the six. Parade of Nations looking for four in a row. How about the one Fleet Gold mm -hmm. Digger we both like? I think a, a very nice claim for Jamie Ness, a seven-year-old son of Not For Love, a Maryland bred, big win last out against first level allowance Maryland breads at pretty, Pimlico. Pretty shrewd. Got, you know, targeted this the, the race last time out, that state bred race, got it out of the way. Super powerful run uh, through the final eighth of a mile. Fleet Gold Digger, you know, he's going to have to improve a little bit. There, there's no doubt, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he's got way to go back for him. He runs in the lower 80s when he's right, so Fleet Gold Digger. Uh, that was really, really sharp last time. I think he's going to make a good run. I think this is going to be an honest, honest pace up front. All right, let's uh, turn the page here. Race 7, you like the late pick mm -hmm. four. It's a nice maiden special weight going two turns on the bowl game turf course. Let's take a look at Keith's late pick four, see how he played it. Yeah, it's a $24 ticket. I'd like to go a little bit more. We're going to keep this reasonable, though. Seventh race, the two, six, and eight. They look like the logical three when you really break it down. In race 7, uh, your best value in there probably will be Michael Dickinson source the sixth piece of a Kati. Uh, eighth race, the one and the three, Viva Forever and Frisky Whiskey come back, reunite again. They run, were very tight there up at the parks. Uh, race nine, the three and the seven, Beaks is a second time gelding. Uh, and the seven, Glinda's Girl, Good Karma, I believe is also a first time get reported gelding off a little freshening for Perkins. Spreading in the tenth, two, four, eight, and twelve, twenty-four dollar ticket. All right, let's take a look at this first leg. Maiden mm -hmm. special weight going a mile and the 16th on the bowl game rail at 17 feet. Uh, the 8 midnight tea time is going to be a popular mm -hmm. favorite in here, but we have a video spotlight to show you of the two. Uno Dancer, a homebred for Adina Springs and Stronic, three-year-old by Macho Uno. Here's the race late May at Pimlico, a very good second. Yeah, it swings outside and makes a nice run. Five wide, you see in the Stronic colors, the Stronic silks uh, for Prado. Settled this horse nicely, turning for home. A big run. You want to talk about just an absolute brutal beat, though, as they come to the wire. Uno Dancer draws alongside. Daddy's cozy. These two are going to go nose and nose all the way to the wire. Needed this horse at 11 to 1. Stan, we just couldn't quite get it. Look at this. Nose bobs to the wire. Daddy's cozy, the heavy favorite, gets the, gets the bob. Uh, Uno Dancer, though, right back. The two-back try. He was a video spotlight for us that day yep. on May 27th. Two-back try. We talked about it. Lost a lot of momentum into the far turn when getting banged around. This horse right back here is going to be tough for Corrales. All right, so the two and the eight going to be awfully tough. Mm -hmm. You're trying to beat them both with the Dickinson horse mm -hmm. by tail of a caddy. The sixth piece of a caddy, a very good second coming off the layoff in his turf debut last out here at Laurel. Well, you see the third-place finisher there, Captain Hardship last time, came back and won this weekend in New York with a buyer of 83 for Grand Motion. Piece of a caddy overcame a stumbling start there. I just think he holds a little bit more value uh, than the two and the eight. All right, nice maiden special weight there to kick off the late pick four. Let's take a look at race eight. It's going to kick off the final pick three, a two other than allowance feature here going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Mm -hmm. My price play of the day. How about the seven? So innocent, maybe right to the front here for this four-year-old daughter of blame and Charlie L. Frock and the P&H guys. You know they'll be here. It was a nice uh, a nice forwardly placed win at six to one, three starts ago against first level allowance company. Mm -hmm. And then the race after that on the turf, a good effort right here at Laurel Park. They didn't care for the slop too much at Pimlico. Uh, that was a tough race. Uh, Black-eyed Susan Day at mm -hmm. Pimlico. The horse is 0 for 2 in the slop. Gets back to a track where she, she has, she's had a big win at against Allowance Company. So I'll take a mm -hmm. shot here with the 7 so innocent. I think she'll get a nice, uh, if she can't make the lead, she'll have a nice uh, trouble-free mm -hmm. stalking trip on the outside yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, and she dogged him and was headed on March 11th. Speed kind of favoring track that day. Was able to get back and beat hell of a fire. Uh, uh, there is very little. You could throw a blanket over these horses maybe at the wire. Garden games, I know it's 21 in the morning. I just jumped up and run big in this company before. So where do you go? I, I'm going to go with a hot horse right here. Her horse has won. She's won two in a row. Uh, transitioned from the turf, moved up the parks on the dirt. Distance not a problem. Has overcome trouble the last two. I just like the determination she has. She's tactical. She draws inside. Viva forever. Michael Sanchez, he's had some good fortune when he's come down here to ride. All right. So I, I didn't use the one, but those are the, the Philly is in good form right now. I wasn't sure how tough those races were at parks, but 
uh, in good form, going the right direction now. Should get a nice ground saving trip from the inside. The two Folk Magics won this condition before right here at Laurel Park last October. Mm -hmm. It was a small field off the turf, but nonetheless, a good effort. 77 buyer. This filly is in for the tag here for Jamie Ness. First off the claim for the Ness Barn, and you get the hot Daniel Centeno to ride. Yeah, you're right thing to do. You're coming back for a pot of 45,000. Maybe if you can win and get claimed, but uh, yeah, holding the level. Uh, Delacour usually doesn't give anything away. Folk Magic, another one. It, you know, likes to be forwardly placed. Yeah, she's got a big number. Uh, back at Tampa over the winter time. Looks like she has a slight edge over this field. I, I'm a little bit suspicious, though, reaching in off of Delacar. I'm going to stick with the one and the three. Frisky Whiskey, as honest as can be. All right, nice allowance feature there in race eight. Another nice allowance race for you here in race nine. First level allowance, three and up, going six furlongs on the main track. And uh, we have a late, late scratch in here on the mm -hmm. eight, Mr. Bricks, who was my top pick. I end up on the three, Beaks, my top pick. And uh, we had a video, so that yeah, horse yeah, is out. Yeah. Let's talk about the three, Beaks, my top pick mm -hmm. here. Uh, second off, a long layoff for this five-year-old son of Into Mischief for trainer Chucky Lawrence. But uh, the, the comeback race in the slop at Pimlico on Preakness Day, first level allowance, went to the front that day at 8-1, to one, just got beat a neck by Hill Shadow, a game effort in the comeback, you hope the horse doesn't bounce off that, right. he's 0 for 3 here at Laura, but that was a long time ago, I go with the three beaks on top here, race 9. Yeah, the horse has obviously flashed some talent, he's only run 9 times though as a 5-year-old, but reported first time gelding last time out, came back as sharp as could be, Hill Shadow's a good sprinter. Uh, and this horse gets a little bit of an assist here, a major assist with the eight Mr. Bricks coming out. Uh, could be the controlling speed stand towards the inside with Georgie Vargas. I'll go with the seven. Glinda's good karma here for Perkins all since December. A reported first time gelding. The, the word was out on this horse back in April last year in the debut. Was bet down to two to one in a big gaudy 11 horse field and, and got in a little bit of trouble. Claim on to just miss behind uplifting. Held okay form, but that last race before the layoff, that is a super key race. Four next out winners, uh, two of them. I think the top two came back to run 90-plus buyer figures. Glinda's good karma, a, a little freshening. I think it's a real good stalking trip today uh, under Sheldon Russell. I like the horse. I like the first-time gelding angle. I like the connections here. Might get a nice – well, she'll probably get a nice trip on the outside. Mm -hmm. Gets a much better outside post than those last couple races last winter up mm -hmm. there at Parks. And a nice, a nice first level. Allowance race here. All right, let's, let's uh, speed through. We got to get the McKenzie Kirkenhead. Yeah, that's right. We the, got uh, one minute for that, and then the McKenzie good, good Kirk Kirkenhead. Yeah, Kirkenhead. Good off and flying okay. start. She's here hustling the uh, thoroughbred industry cool. awards that good off and does awarding up to 128,000 to backstretch workers. Wow. Last year, Timmy Keefe had nice. a person that was second in the running. So okay. trying to get some uh, nice uh, awards for our backstretch workers here. Let's take a look here at the 10th race. So nice claiming 7,500, three and up, going a mile on the 16th here on the Acceler Rail at 70 feet. Whew. I go with an 0 for 30 horse on the turf on top here. The eight liberal spin, Jacqueline Davis in town to ride this eight-year-old son of kittens joy for Hugh McMahon. He has made about 80,000 on mm -hmm. the turf, so oh, yeah. he's picked up some nice tracks and a, a good second at this level, last out, second off the layoff, now third off the layoff, I think poised to uh, finally break his maiden on the <laughs> turf at the ripe old age of eight. The eight liberal spin, my top pick here in race 10. He's due. He's a kitten's joy. He's got to get a win on the turf, doesn't he? Yeah, he'll, he'll be a factor yeah. uh, somewhere for mid-pack for Jackie Davis. A lot of ways to go here. Uh, let's take a shot. We, we, we're going to go with a – what do we have here in the last? I've got the two, two for, on top. That's right. Two, two for Cero. Yeah, for Cero. I'm going to take a shot at a bomb. Heiko looks like the speed, but for Cero, uh, last time all the way at the bottom of the page in an open 75, got it done. I know that's back in 2016. But we've seen Wayne Cole pull off some big upsets, big, yep. big prices. For Cero, it's tactical enough. I think he's good. I think Cruz Moore as well for Dale Capuano. The 10-year-old drops back to the right level. He's only had a couple races in a long, long time. But – Cruz Moore will make a run from the back of the pack. Yeah, it was, it was J.D. Acosta and Wayne Cole who had that big 50-1 mm -hmm. to one winner back in the spring that yep. paid out that $400,000 pick six. You mm -hmm. see the ROI, almost $20 for J.D. Acosta and Wayne Cole in, uh, in race 10. So nice, okay. uh, nice uh, turf route there in the 10th race. All right, we want to show you this little interview we got 
the other morning right here at Laurel Park. Mackenzie Kirkerhead was here from the Godolphin Flying Start program. Godolphin has the Third Red Industry Employee Awards. They award up to 128000 to the hardworking bash sex workers. The nominations for these awards are open until uh, August. Mackenzie wow. was here hustling all the trainers on the backside, trying to get them to nominate their, uh, their hardworking backstretch workers. Here's more about it. Here's Mackenzie Kirkerhead from the Godolphin Flying Start. Here with Mackenzie Kirkerhead. She's with the Godolphin Flying Start. Great to have you here in Maryland. How did you get into the Godolphin Flying Start, and what brings you here to Maryland? Well, thank you so much for having me today. Um, I grew up, my grandfather had race horses, and I grew up riding, and that was up in uh, Massachusetts with Suffolk Downs and Rockingham, and I just knew I wanted to be in the industry from an early age, so when I was in high school, I started surfing the internet for ways to get involved, and I came across the Godolphin Flying Start program, which is a two-year, uh, five-country educational leadership program, um, and I kind of just hook, line, and sinker there, knew that I wanted to do that program, so that's what I've worked for, and here I am now, so it's awesome. And you're here in Maryland with the Third Red Industry Employee Awards presented by Godolphin USA. Talk about that cool program. Yeah, so we do an externship um, during our time on the Flying Start, and so I was fortunate enough to do mine with the Third Red Industry Employee Awards, um, and it's a really great program that uh, has $128,000 in prize money, six categories, um, and it honors staff that are often overworked and underappreciated, so the likes of grooms, hot walkers, exercise riders, there's a category called the Dedication to Racing Award, it's $10,000 prize money to them, 5000 on top of that to their stable that can be used to divvy up amongst the staff or throw a party to uh, runners up as well 2500 to them 2500 to their stable and the finalists are flown into um, Kentucky during Breeders Cup week and honored at Churchill Downs which is hosting the Breeders Cup this year so it's just a really great way of giving back um, and there's more there's more categories as well you can go online to the website godolphinusawards.com for for further information and nominating and the nominations are open now. How long is the nomination process going till? Yes, they're, they're open until August 15th. Um, so it's really it's really quite simple to nominate online. It doesn't take much time, and it just kind of gives back to the industry and the staff. So it's a great way of kind of, you know, appreciate, showing your appreciation for, for those who, you know, give their lives to the industry, to the thoroughbreds and whatnot. Certainly a great program. Great to have you here in Maryland representing the Dolphin. What would be your dream job in the industry once you're done this program? Yeah, I'd like to do, I'd like to at the time run, right now, run racing syndicates at some point and make it kind of affordable for everybody and fun for everyone. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs>